Hey, what's going on, everyone? Sly here with Flo. And Flo, we're listening to uh, Mike Holmgren on 95.7, the game. For those of you who don't know, uh, for all you young cats, uh, he was the uh, offensive quarterbacks coach for the Niners in the eight, um, 80s. And he, brilliant guy, obviously went to Green Bay and then Seattle. But he talked about two points that got to me. One was about how he had to put Bill Walsh in check. And then two... He was talking about Brock Purdy, but let's check this clip out real quick and we'll talk about it. They stuck with Brock and they, I mean, they hit a grand slam here. And I just, I don't think enough credit is given to the dialogue behind the scenes. No, I know. And it gets, if people really knew the real dialogue, I, <clears throat> there was one evening when we were not playing well and it was my last, uh, well, we wound up, it was 1980 when we went to the Super Bowl. We wound up going to the Super Bowl. We had just lost the Raiders in a stinker, nine to three or something. Yep, I remember that. So Bill, you remember that game? And <laughs> yep. then, so, Bill, Monday night, we had dinner, tables, wine glasses, all this stuff in Mr. DeBartolo's office. It was all set up, and I go, what? Because normally we're paper plates, and you're, you're in your coaching shorts getting ready for the next week. We go in there, and Bill went around the room to each guy and says, what's, going, what's wrong with the team? And they went, you know, and guys would say, well, the left guard, I remember Bob McKittrick, the left guard pulled, and then someone with this, the receiver dropped this ball. And I'm thinking, no, because he had, cause Steve and Joe were going back and forth in, during the games. Bill was playing them that way. And, and, I, and I finally got to me and I said, Coach, I think you're the problem. And the, the, the room stopped. And the coaches looked at me and I said, they, they, listen, they listen to me, but they hear you. So I said, pick one. Pick one and then I think and then we'll go. And he slammed down on the table and he walked out of the room. And I'm going, and all the coaches, they start throwing rolls at me. They're yelling at me. They're swearing at me. What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? And so then, then he comes back and he goes, Mike's right. Yep. We're going to go with Joe. Yep. And he, and then, but he goes, Mike, you know what happens if this doesn't work? I'm going, oh, gee whiz, I'm, I got little kids. I'm going, right. <laughs> I go, what's going to happen here? But we wound up having, yeah. we beat Washington in a big game. Yep, Monday Night Football, and, and, yeah. Yeah. And then the next morning, Joe gave uh, Coach Walsh gave me the game ball. And I, that's the one football thing I have in my cabin in Santa Cruz on the mantle. You know, when when I look at, at these two teams, uh, I'm looking at the two quarterbacks. Obviously, you've talked to us at length just about how when you're a head coach, when you're an offensive corner, you're a teacher, and you're trying to teach these guys. And, and both these guys came into the league very differently, Jordan Love and Brock Purdy. Just your thoughts on Brock Purdy, though, to start with. I mean, he feels like a guy you would love to coach. Oh, no. I mean, I watch him play. And, and you know, it's, it, the, everyone knows his story of being the last kid drafted and all that kind of stuff. So there was a reason that that happened. You know, I used to analyze quarterbacks as my job. And, you know, there's certain things you look for. And so there's a reason he was picked later. But, you know, it was the perfect fit, I think, with Kyle and the people around him. But then now he doesn't get enough credit because he's a very accurate passer. He's a tough kid mentally. Uh, and he's just going to get better. I mean, I, I always said that a quarterback, if he can stay with the same coach and the same coordinator for a couple of years, he hits his stride in year three. You know, it takes that time to mature and to get ready to play. Well, Kyle, and, and the, the the connection there between coach and quarterback and yep. the rest of the guys on the team, it's happened sooner for them. But, uh, you know, I, I love the young man, and, you know, he his record speaks for itself. They right. don't lose games. Yep. All right, man, that first part with Bill Walsh, man, you have to be ballsy, man, to be the quarterback's coach. Um, one of the greatest co uh, coaches of all time telling him, hey, dude, you got to stick with one quarterback. Like, you have to stick with one. And basically, Bill Walsh was like, you're right. But if you're wrong, you're fired. You know, pretty much, which is insane, man. But uh, Mike Holmgren, uh, Santa Cruz guy, too, by the way. So he lives right next to us, um, saying that stuff. And then he talked about Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, man, that kind of pumped me up how he was talking about. He's like a quarterback guru, by the way. Talking about, yeah, it's usually your third year where you kind of, that's when you really start getting it all together. And that's where everything clicks. And hearing that, I was like, all right, so next year he might be, you know, even better. But then it's like pretty much this is his first year. So he's going to get, it looks like get better the next two years. So hearing him talk about this, man, it kind of jacked me up. But what do you think about this conversation? Yeah, man. First, we'll start with the Bill Walsh thingy. Yeah, man, that does take some balls. 
I don't think he obviously knew that Bill Walsh is going to be like, hey, your job's on the line before he <laughs> said this. But still, he was 100% right. Sometimes you just got to take that chance and pick your best option. Say, hey, like, we got to go with this. And that's what the Niners had to do with Brock Purdy and Trey Lance. Yep. They just had to finally make that decision. Say, hey, there's too much uh, distractions. Having two two on the roster, essentially. It's almost like girls, you know. Sometimes too many of them could be a bad thing, you know. As much as, as crazy as it is to hear that, it's true. It's the truth, man. It, mm-hmm. It's just hard freaking balancing things like that. So we had to go with the guy, Brock Purdy. Luckily, we picked the right one. So mm-hmm. that was a good thing because sometimes, he even says it, sometimes you just got to hope you made the right call, you know? And that's not always the case. But luckily, Brock Purdy was that right call because of what he said in the other segment, how this guy is able to just freaking read defenses like no other. And Mike Holmgren, man, he was around a lot of good quarterbacks. Obviously, the Joe Montana's, the Steve Young, Brett Favre, Brett Favre and even was a Matt Hasselbeck. Hasselbeck where he yeah, took him to the Pro Bowl. He, he, he took him to the Pro Bowl and he even Bowl. took him to the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl as yeah. well. So he's been around a good amount of quarterbacks. So he understands how to evaluate these guys. I think that's how he even started. He started as an evaluator, then he became the quarterback mm-hmm. coach, right? Mm-hmm. So he knows his stuff. And then, um, Man, I everything he was saying, I just love it, and it's so cool. Uh, he still like obviously he didn't be a, he wasn't the head coach for the Four Niners, but he just loves the Niners. Obviously, being a city guy, he still has that like that love for the Niners. And then I, I just like that's the end of that story, the Bill Walsh story, how he has that uh, ball, like you said, oh, yeah, up game in ball, the, the game up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. That's cool because obviously we're right next to Santa Cruz, so mm-hmm. uh, that's a dope story. But man, what do you think about this? Yeah, it was a lot of good stuff that he was saying. Every time like these gurus talk. You listen to them, like the other dudes out there, the talking heads, like, you know, Nick Wright or those guys that really pretty much, they just talk just to freaking uh, piss people off. Uh, But these guys right here, the um, Holmgrums, the Great Colesals, Brian Baldinger, the guys that actually, they've done it and they've watched tons of film, you know, they watch tons of film and they know exactly, you know, what's right and what's not. And it seems like all these guys, these knowledgeable knowledgeable dudes um, that talk about Brock Purdy, man, they... They're excited by him. When he was hearing talking about Brock Purdy right now, he's like, dude, like, I really like him. Like, I wish, you know, I could kind of coach. I wish I could be there coaching him because uh, he, you know, he has a lot, shows a lot of, um, he has a lot of intangibles, man. So hearing this, man, I was just like, all right, I'm not going crazy, you know, because I listen to Fox Sports all the time. I, I shouldn't, man. That's like my, uh, <laughs> that's like my dirty pleasure, man, watching <laughs> Fox Sports and then hearing them pretty much always like rip on Purdy, you know, so I'm like, I don't know why I do it, but I watch it. But then when I listen to these guys, I actually know what they're talking about. Um, it, it, it like kind of like, all right, reassures everything. It eases that, you. Yeah, it eases me up. Like, okay, I'm not going crazy here. <laughs> that This guy, you know, he knows what he's talking about. And I mean, I, I love what he said about that. And I mean, the guy knows his stuff, man. He had, he was in the room with Steve Young and Joe Montana at the same time. And he straight up said, you know, Bill, we gotta go, we gotta go with Joe. We can't be going back and forth and all this baloney. And I'll be honest, personally, back then it kind of looked like it should have. Instead of, I like Steve, uh, George Seifert. He was a defensive guy, but I think the, the after Bill Walsh retired, it should have been Mike Holmgren or uh, Mike Shanahan. Those two guys seem like they were like brilliant. Um, brilliant coaches and they probably should have been the coaches i think we would have won way more in the 90s you know not just that not just their brilliance but they actually knew how to interact with these guys that was a big problem with uh george was that he never really got along with his guys you know he Mm -hmm. had great players but they never meshed and that's what you need for a team you need to be able to mesh all the way from the best players to the worst players and the coaching staff you know and i do like steve miyuchi however i just don't know if he was the guy you know but it's kind of seemed like some things that he says were kind of off base because i remember him saying yeah if i were a coach again the first thing i want to get is a long snapper that's the first i'm like what the fuck are you talking (laughs) about come on steve like i like steve and all but man i seem like we kind of underperformed under him. We never got a Super Bowl with him. But Mike Holmberg, man, he's a he's a genius, man. Him talking high on Brock Purdy, I was pretty pumped up. And everything he was talking about with uh, Bill Walsh is like, yeah, this guy, he knows what he's talking about. He's been there. He's done that everywhere he went. He won. He knows how to find a quarterback. Um, and he knew what to do. Even um, Matt Hasselbeck, who kind of, you know, was a good quarterback, he knew exactly um, what to do with him and he made him great so man dang imagine if he was still coaching like a quarterback's coach with us oh man i know he would take brock purdy to the next level but uh i'm pumped man i'm pumped that he's uh he sees what we see in brock purdy despite 
you know, all of the naysayers out there saying that he's, you know, whatever, <laughs> he's a system quarterback, but no, nah, he sees something good in him, so I'm pumped up. And, yeah, yeah, man, and like that nugget you said, how he's talking about right now, year two, he's already that level, almost like yeah. a year three guy. Mm -hmm. If we win the Super Bowl, man, and his freaking confidence goes even higher, man, plus he's going to be in that year three system, there's not going to be any stopping us, man. If we mm -hmm. get it done this year, man, it's going to be over for the league for the next couple of years, mm -hmm. so... Uh, man, that, that take by him, it's going to show a lot in this upcoming week. And all those quarterbacks, man, that second year is when it seemed like a lot of them, they, the grades, they do it like, um, Patrick Mahomes, Tom it, Brady, Tom Brady um, even Russell Wilson, he took that next step. That yeah. second, went to the Super Bowl, I think. Yeah, but his defense carried His that. defense yeah. did carry him, but he did great in that Super yeah. Bowl. He threw for like well, a whole bunch of yards and like 40 plus points. Uh, but yeah, it's that second year is when they do it. And he's, he's doing it, man, even though kind of his first year. So, I mean, I think he's just going to get better and better every year. He's just going to learn more and more, get used to the system, um, know how to read coverages even more. So, I mean, it's, it's I'm pumped up. I think it's going to keep going, and this guy's going to – he's going to next year – I think he's going to win it. One year he's going to win this MVP race. I know he came so close this year. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. He was with this team. Uh, Michael Jordan, like I said, we've said this a hundred times, the ceiling is the roof, baby. And Brock Purdy, he's the man. And Mike Holmgren, love what he's saying. I know he's he's loyal to the Packers. He's loyal to the Seahawks. But deep down, he grew up a San Francisco 49er fan. And I think we got that San Francisco treat on our team, man. All right. Well, you guys let us in the comments what you guys think about what the old coach says. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. See you all next time. Peace. Peace.